Greetings. This is an APC SmartUps VT 20KVA three-phase uninterruptible power supply, or UPS. The building it was in has been closed down, the UPS is end of life, so it's come here to be dismantled before the electronics go back to our electronics disposal container for recycling. Incidentally, the replacement for the SmartUps VT is the Galaxy 3500. Here's a 40 kVA version of each side by side. As you can see, they're completely, completely different machines. A few years ago, I did a teardown of the power module of its 40 kVA bigger brother. This time, I'll be skipping some of the deeper digging into the power module, but I will take a look at the rest of the chassis. First of all, let's see if we can power it up. This particular model takes between one and four battery modules, each of which consists of four battery packs, each of which contains eight 12 volt batteries. They're all connected in series with the negative side over on the, the left, as you can see here, the neutrals all connected together down the middle and the positive side connected over on the right. Which means if you push in a pair of batteries on the left and a pair of batteries on the right, that should be enough to start up the UPS. Unfortunately, that's not the case here. Although these battery packs do have charge, as I've measured across the terminals on the rear of the unit, it won't start. The sales blurb says it can cold start, but I've tried every button combination I can think of and it's not reacting. So whether the batteries are just too far gone, I mean these batteries are nine years old, uh, I don't know. But this, it's powered down for good. Above the battery packs we can see that we've got the power module, which can be removed for maintenance or repair. By putting it into bypass mode through the, the front panel LCD, then rotating this handle to engage the mechanical bypass. At the top then you can see we've got the slot which will take the network management cards and finally we've got the control panel which is part of the chassis but actually plugs in to the power module. One question I had in my head which is why I brought it here to dismantle instead of just doing it in the disposals container was whether or not it could start and possibly charge on a single phase supply effectively turning it into a large single to three phase converter. The answer unfortunately is no. It won't power up with a single 240 volt connection phase to ground, nor will it do it with phase to phase. I sort of didn't expect it to after seeing a switch mode power supply in the 40 kVA module, which appeared to be designed for a 400 volt input. This range of UPSs was available in 3 to 1 and 3 phase models, but no single to 3 phase. Also, I'd expected it to need much bigger smoothing capacitors if it were to run from a single phase supply compared to 3 phase. Another question was whether or not it could be run from a separate power supply, such as this PowerWave 3000T. Could this basically act as a battery charger using the battery terminals at the rear of both units to link them together? I doubt it, because although the VT would probably be happy to keep discharging its batteries as the 3000T fills them up, the 3000T would be seeing no power demand on its own inverter output, so presumably not offering much more than a standard charging current to feed the batteries. If something's trying to haul several kilowatts and that something isn't its own inverter, it's not going to be best pleased. In any case, it doesn't seem to want a cold start from battery, so that ain't going to work anyway. So, no second life as a three-phase motor drive for this one. It's getting scrapped. Today. The batteries have been pulled out slightly to render the power module completely dead. They're still in the chassis though, as they're going to be needed to weigh the whole thing down ready for what I'm going to do next, which is to remove the power module. This isn't as heavy as the 40 kVA one, but it is still very, a very big chunk. In fact, I'm going to pull something different down so I can work on it. Right, that's it out. Let's take a look inside. Incidentally, the next steps are also what you need to do if you're replacing the fan tray at the front. It's not a user replaceable part, but it's an engineer replaceable part. I've got one right here. This has now exposed the fan tray. That fan tray plugs in in three locations on the board, three awkward locations on the board. And the engineer now has the choice, either remove the fan tray, take the whole damn thing apart, 
to get at these connectors or you can cut the cables there cut these off and use this set of six plug and socket connectors to plug the, the, the new fan tray into the existing chassis. I'm not doing that though, I'm taking it apart. And this is what's inside. This is similar to one half of the 40 kVA unit where we've got the, the power interface board here and various other heavy duty gubbins at the back and then behind that you'll have three 6.67 kVA power modules. On the 40 kVA one it had six. It had three in here and then it had a load in a second unit which was bolted alongside. And at the bottom we can see we've got a toroidal transformer which will be for driving some of this stuff when it's actually running on the mains. On battery I don't know, it doesn't seem to want to want to boot up. This I think, I'll have to check the old video, I think this is where it connects through to the the second module if one is fitted because that would that would sit over on this section on on this side of the chassis and then the whole lot is wrapped in one big metal can so I shall carry on dismantling this thing this one is marked up as a par controller I'm sure it does more than just uh, just parallel operation but that's what it's labeled as that's the power supply dual fuses which are rated at 500 volts so I suspect this runs on a three volts of uh, three phase supply Interestingly, there's a power, there's a, a recessed button there, which is accessible through that, through there. That may, may have allowed it to cold start. Either had to push something in there to start it up. Um, I'm not going to put it back together now to find out, but that may have been an option. Stick uh, something in there to kick start it. Unfortunately, there are no instructions online for uh, for actually starting up a VT. The um, the Symmetra range, the Symmetra RM, which is a similar display. There's an on-off switch on the front of that. Uh, the old, the other ones have different mechanisms, um, but there's no instructions for the VT. I suspect you push that button there. Also, if you wanted to change the fans without cutting the cables, this is as far as you've got to go to do it. There we go, quite a heavy board this one. That's the power interface board. One 6.67 kVA power interface board. I think it's basically a 400 volt power amp. And unlike the 40 kVA one, no scorch marks on these. Some more nice contactors, and not a lot else, apart from a nice bit of copper. And some nice chunky double thyristors. Three of those in the static bypass module at the, at the bottom. And that's that. Well, that's the power module done. Let's strip some stuff from the front of the chassis and then we'll turn our attention to the back. Won't be needing the documentation anymore. At the top in the rear we've got this rotary isolator. This is normally in the off position here. When the unit is put into maintenance bypass mode and mechanical bypass so you can take the unit out with the, uh, the power module out without shutting the, the load down. That handle at the front rotates this to the on position which links the bypass connection and the output. And at the moment the bypass connection because this is configured as a single supply not as a dual supply uh, UPS the input which would normally come in over here has been commoned with these thick copper bus bars to the bypass connection. You can also run it as a dual supply, so you have a you have your normal day-to-day -day running supply and you have a dedicated bypass supply if you wish. So you've got your input, bypass connections, the output, there's a neutral connection there, which also connects to the, the neutral on the uh, the battery pack. So you've got the battery pack which is uh, plus, neutral, and minus. Also on this board we've got connections for if you've got an external maintenance bypass panel that will connect there and also uh, remote emergency power off so you can have a kill switch just 
shuts the UPS dead. On the rear of this panel then, or the front really, we have the connections which go to the, the power module itself. These simply plug in like that when the unit is, is pushed home. And behind here you have the battery terminals. Negative over there, neutral in the middle, positive over there. Here are two of the backplane boards, there's not much to them. There's an LP324N chip there, and these just daisy chain down along, the uh, along one side and up along the other, and they have a single connection then, which goes into the main, into the rest of the system. And the rest of this is pretty much metal. I think it's time to take the top lid off now. Here's the front panel. RJ45 connections at both ends. But you can see what you can do, those you can mount it externally, you can just have uh, an RG45 cable off this and screw it to the wall. Side panels now lift off. It's just nuts and bolts and metal panels now. that's that thanks for watching